Hello, this is section 6.1, Vector Fields. For this section, there isn't any homework. To begin, let's recall our formula for magnitude. So our magnitude is the square root of x squared plus y squared. We'll be seeing this again. So to begin, what are vector fields? Vector fields are important tool for describing many physical concepts such as gravitational and electromagnetism, which affect the behavior of objects over a large region of a plane or a space. So here's a picture of a lake with water running through it, and we have a rock. So we can see how the water flow um, moves along the rock and along the lake. To begin, let's begin with the definition of vector field. A vector field f in R2 is an assignment of two-dimensional vector f of x comma y to each point x comma y of a subset d of R. The subset d is the domain of the vector field. The vector field f in R3 is an assignment of three-dimensional vector f of x comma y comma z to each point x comma z, x comma y comma z of each subset of d of R3. So let's begin with R2 vector fields. A vector field in R2 can present in either two ways. The first is to use a vector with components that are two variable functions. So you've seen before this um, vector notation with the parentheses. And the second way is the standard unit vectors. So we use that i and j notation. You've seen them before. They're just different ways of writing your vectors. Let's do a quick example. Let f of x comma y equal 2y squared plus x minus 4i plus cosine xj be a vector field in R2. What is a vector associated with the point 0 comma 1? So honestly, for this one, all we're going to do is we're going to substitute for x is 0 and y is negative 1 so that we have 2 times negative 1 squared plus 0 minus 4i plus cosine of x, which is 0, j. So we have negative 2i plus j as our result. Drawing a vector field. Now this is something that it's it's very helpful to know, it's super important, but I won't be too, um, too strict on how we draw. They're kind of time consuming to draw. We can now present a vector field in terms of its components, of functions, or unit vectors, but presenting it visually by sketching it is more complex because of the domain of a vector field in R2 as is it is in its range. Therefore, the graph of a vector field in R2 lives in four-dimensional space, but we use a vector field in R2 in a plane instead. There are two types of vector fields in R2 on which we focus, radial fields and rotational fields. Radial fields model certain gravitational fields and energy source fields, and rotational fields model the movement of liquid in a vortex, so something like where it goes in a circle like that. A radial field in a vector is either point directly toward or directly away from the origin. So you'll have vectors going this way, or maybe inside that way. So let's an example to sketch the vector field. f of x comma y equals x over 2i plus y over 2j, or as I like to think of it as 1 over 2 xi plus 1 over 2 yj. Okay, to sketch this vector field, choose sample points from each quadrant and compute the corresponding vector. So these points were chosen at random. Now in your book, it has your chart like this, and just know that it's, it's xy charts. So we have one xy chart here, another xy chart here, and another one here. I just think they wrote them together to save space. So let's do Let's take a look at this first chunk of our graph. So we're just, we just chose these points at random. 
well not really at random we want to choose points within each quadrant so points within our axis points along our first quadrant so we have one half xi plus one half yj right yes Okay, so we chose these points. We're going to let x equal 1 and y equal 0. Let's go ahead and work that out. So that I have 1 half, my x will be 1, plus 1 half, my y will be 0. So we're left with the vector 1 half i plus 0 j. Or if you like the parentheses notation, it's just 1 half comma 0. So be, familiarize yourself again with the different ways of writing a vector. And that's all we did for all these points. Now, once we go ahead and we graph them, we get something like this. Now, I'm not too sure, I'll be honest, I'm not too sure how they got this picture. From my understanding of vectors, so let's take this first one we did. We have our first point, 1 comma 0, and then we have a vector, 1 half comma 0, which is here. So then we have a vector going this way. And we it kind of doesn't seem to be the direction of our vector fields. So I'm curious as to how this happened. And when I test my points like this one, we have negative 1, 1 here, and then we have negative half and half, so we go a half this way, so we go something like this. Or maybe I'm, I'm missing something. I'm not too sure. I just wanted to voice my question. All right, next example. Suppose that, x, that v of x comma y equals negative 2yi over x squared plus y squared plus 2x over x squared plus y squared j is the velocity field of a fluid. How fast is the fluid moving at a point 1 comma negative 1? Assume the speed r in meters per second. So meters per second. All right, so that kind of recall makes us fall back on our knowledge of what we have for um, for the velocity. So to begin, let's go ahead and substitute these points. So we're going to let x be 1 and y be negative 1. So v of 1 comma negative 1, we get 2 times negative 1 divided by 1 plus 1 for i and 2 times 1 over 1 plus 1 j. Okay, so our result for that is i plus j. But we wish to find the velocity of it. So to find the speed, we use the magnitude. So that we have the magnitude of i plus j equals the square root of, so for i we have just 1 and for j we just have 1. So I have 1 squared plus 1 squared, which gives us 1 plus 1 is 2, the square root of 2. So our final answer would be square root of 2 meters per second. Not so bad, it just takes an, an effort of recalling what we know about vectors. We can also have a unit vector. Do you remember what a unit vector is? If a field f is in a unit vector, a field is a magnitude of each of its vectors, is the, fi is the field is one. If a unit vector field, the only relevant information is the direction of, the unit, of each vector. So a unit vector is one divided by the magnitude of our vector. So that if we have our vector times unit vector, we should get one result. 
Okay, next example, show the vector field is a unit vector field. So we have y over the square root of x squared plus y squared minus x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we have our, our vector, our, our i and our j. Let's go ahead and find the magnitude. So to find, well, a unit vector, it's one over our magnitude, right? So I have Well, we want to show that it's equal to 1. So in a sense, we want to show that our magnitude is 1. OK. So I have the square root of, let's take our first one and square it, y over the square root of x squared plus y squared squared. And then we want to square the second so that we have x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, let's go ahead and apply the square. So in the numerator, I have y squared. In our denominator, that square undoes that radical, so we have x squared plus y squared. Then we have x squared over x squared plus y squared. They have the same denominator. So we can go ahead and just add. So we have y squared plus x squared over x squared plus y squared. And we have the same thing divided by itself. So we have 1. The so square root of 1 is 1. So therefore, it is a unit vector. All right, moving forward. Now, this is directly from the text. It was a lot to type, so I just go ahead and screenshot it. Why are unit vector fields important? Suppose we're straining the flow of fluid and we care only about the direction in which the fluid is flowing at a given point. In this case, the speed of the fluid, which is the magnitude of the corresponding velocity or vector, is irrelevant because all we care is of the direction of the vector. Therefore, the unit vector field is associated with the velocity in which with the velocity is the field we would study. Now with that, let's recall some pieces of information. If f of p comma q comma r is a vector field, then its corresponding unit vector field is our same vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. If the vector y comma negative x is a vector field, then the magnitude is x squared plus y squared, the square root of x squared plus y squared, and therefore the corresponding unit vector field is the field g from the previous example. If f is a vector field and the process dividing f by its magnitude to, the, to form the unit vector f over the magnitude of f is called normalizing the field. Vector fields in R3. Vector fields in R3 are very similar to those of R2, but now we take in consideration, consideration the depth of the vector field. An example, describe the vector field f of x comma y comma z, which is 1 comma 1 comma z. So here note x and y are constants, meaning they don't change. So our only changing factor is that z. So this z is what's going to determine our vectors. Now, I don't want to get too in-depth with this, but this is what our, our vector field would look like. Gradient fields. In this section, we study a special kind of vector called the gradient field or conservative vector field. Conservative field. These vector fields are extremely important in physics because they can be used to model physical systems in which energy is conserved. 
Gravitational fields and electric fields associated with static charge are examples of gradient fields. Recall that if f is scalar, the function of x and y, then the gradient of f is f of x fx of x comma y i plus fy of x comma y j. In Lehman's term, in Lehman's terms, it would be your derivative. Just as our derivative gives us, or better yet, our partial derivative in terms of x. And then we have it in terms of y. Next definition. A vector field f in R2 or in R3 is a gradient field if there exists a scalar function of f such as the gradient of f equals f. Note that a vector field is conservative vector field or gradient field if there exists a scalar function such that the gradient of f equals f in the situation is called the potential function for f. So let's do a quick example. If f of x comma y comma z equals x squared y z minus sine of x y, a potential function for vector field, and it gives you the vector field f of x comma y comma z and it gives you your vector as 2xyz minus y cosine xy comma x squared z minus x cosine y xy comma x squared y. So to make sure that it is a potential function of a vector field, we have to take the partial derivative For x, y, and z. And you will, we need to find f of x, f, y, and f, z. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and first find the partial derivative of f in terms of x. So our x is our variable, the rest are constants. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And the rest are constant, so we have yz. And then we have our derivative in terms of x. We need to use chain rule, so we need to take the derivative of the outside first. The derivative of sine is cosine xy. Now the derivative of the inside, x times y, in terms of x, is just a y. All right, so that's the first one. Let's go ahead and take the partial derivative in terms of y all right so f f partial of f in terms of y so now y is our variable so for the first one we just take the derivative of y which is 1 so I have x squared z minus the derivative of sine is cosine and then the inside y is my variable, the derivative of y is 1, so we just have an x. And lastly, in terms of z, partial derivative of f in terms of z. And for the first one, z is our variable, so we get x squared y. At the end, I don't have a z, so that's just a constant, so that's cool. All right, now we want to go ahead and compare. Is it a potential function for a vector field? And the answer is yes. We did result in the same in the same conclusion. This is our partial derivative for x, this is our partial derivative for y, and this is our z. Same as we have here, x, y, and z. Theorem 6.1, uniqueness of potential functions. Let f be a conservative vector field and a on an open connected domain and let f and g be functions such that the gradient of f equals f and the gradient of g equals f. Then there is a constant z such that f equals g plus z. So this is very similar to 
a definition from calculus that says that derivatives are the same. If derivatives are the same, then the original function varies by a constant. And it kind of is the same idea. So meaning if I have derivatives that are the same, then the function just differs by a constant because a constant ended up being zero. Theorem 6.2, the cross partial property of conservative vector fields. If f is a vector field in two or three dimensions, such as the component functions of f have continuous second order mixed partial derivatives of the domain f, if, in other words, if the partial derivatives are equal. That's all they're saying. We need to show equality within our partial derivatives. So if we have our vector p and then our vector, um, the second component of our vector q, then if I take the partial derivative of the first one in terms of y and the second one in terms of x, and if they're equal, then I can say, yes, it is conservative. So let's see an example. Show that the rotational vector field f of x comma y equals y comma negative x is not conservative. So if it's not conservative, let's talk about what it means to be conservative. If it is conservative, then the partial derivatives will be equal. All right, so let's find out what's going on. So we have our, our vector y comma negative x. So we have p and we have q. So that we have p of x comma y is equal to y and q of x comma y is equal to negative x. So for the first one, let's go ahead and take the partial derivative in terms of y. The derivative of y is one. For the second, let's take the partial derivative in terms of x which gives me negative one. And are they equal? Is one equal to negative one? No, right, it's false. They're not equal. So then we can say that it's not conservative. All right, that's it for section 6.1. And I didn't choose to add homework because the homework problems are kind of setting you up to what you'll learn in the future sections, and they're kind of really open-ended and kind of tricky, so I decided to hold off on those homework problems. All right, that's it for 6.1. Thank you.